Today I'm going to be showing this Intel teaching kit from the 90s. Um, this is called, it's called the Intel Journey Inside the Computer chip kit. Um, I don't have the teaching guides or anything, I just have the actual chip kit with the chips and the transistors and everything. Uh, this one is the third edition, it was released in 1998. So there's the graphics in the front of the box. Uh, you can really tell it's 1998. Uh, there's the silicon wafer. I normally store this in a more protective material, but I wanted to keep it inside the box just to show it on camera. Um, and later I'll show this under the microscope. So this is how the kit would come, except there would be eight batteries and not just four of them. A lot of these are still actually good. I tested them, and for whatever reason, for being 24 years old now, they're still at nine volts. It includes, I'll get to those later, but it includes these cool lamps, some 1.5 volt batteries. I think these are C-cells. Honestly, I haven't seen a C-cell in a long time, or a D-cell. Um, and then some 9 volts, and it has, uh, what do you call these, like connectors for the 9 volts, and it has some LEDs, really old LEDs. In fact, they are 14 volts. Um, and then there's just some loose wire in here that can be used probably to connect the these batteries. There's three transistors, at least mine, mine included three. These are TIP 48s. These are not like MOSFETs or anything made by Texas Instruments, and it includes some electrical tape too. But I'm sure this is probably bad. <laughs> oh, and some switches. So the main part of this kit is the dies and the chip right here. This is a mechanical sample. In fact, you can see on there it just says mech samples. Which means that I don't, I think that means that there's no actual die in here. Um, a couple of the pins are bent and I will be fixing them. Uh, but that's just because of the shipping. This wasn't even in there when it was shipped to me. Uh, I got this from Hong Kong uh, because they're just so rare. That's the only place. You can see it's just a physical representation. And of course the pins nowadays are much stronger than they used to be. Or they're actually weaker. <laughs> Uh, on AMD CPUs because uh, they're smaller and on the, on the boards I'd say they're much weaker just because they have to be more dense. So these are the actual chips that would be in there. I'm not sure what these are from, um, but you can see the dot on it means that it's bad, so that's a bad die. And then this one does not have a dot on it. See in the back, I believe that's gold or it's silicon. I'm also not sure. Could just be how it's reflected. Before I get to showing this under the microscope, I just wanted to show it outside the bag under the light. Um, you can see immediately that this is probably not like a desktop processor. It's probably something smaller just because of how many dies are on here. Um, and if I had to guess, it'd be some sort of like cache or memory just because I think those big banks might be bits in there. Um, I'm not sure, obviously. Um, there might be some markings under the microscope that we'll see. But uh, and here you can see what my setup is. So we'll see that full screen. And then I'm also gonna be looking at these, except I'm not gonna show these under the light just because they are really fragile and I don't wanna break them just yet before I underneath here okay so this is the large wafer underneath the microscope this is the furthest I can get zoomed in uh, because this microscope isn't really made for this type of up close work uh, but you can see just all the circuitry on here um, this is what makes me think that's memory because there's just these large like fields of, or maybe they're probably called banks. 
I think that there'd be some sort of uh, like bits in there that could flip on and off. Um, of course, I'm not an expert on this, uh, but this is genuine Intel silicon. So it's got, I don't know, all the circuitry. Um, and I'll go to the bottom here. Actually, here you can see on the side, there is some numbers. Which really is quite shaky. Yeah, you know, I can't really make those out. So we'll go to the bottom here. Uh, because there's some numbers that I wanted to take a look at just to see what they look like. Seems that the numbers are like stamped in on the edge. I'm gonna guess that all this waviness is part of the spreading technique. Uh, so when they they spin these discs to spread out the like liquid that goes on top. And then over here there's some more. You can actually see how it cuts off on the side. Right there. I don't know if that's a chip or just the, if that's where the liquid didn't reach. Here are some more letters, yeah, right here. You can see how they're labeled in. It's some sort of like burn or melt. I mean, I wouldn't think it'd be done by a drill, but it's certainly a weird, weird type of marking. There's some more of the chips. These are all the same. I mean, they're really not that interesting. Oh, the edge right here is a bit different. It just reflects a bit differently. I don't know if there's anything unique there. Okay, so let's move on to the other smaller chips. Okay, so this is the other chip underneath the microscope, and I believe this is an actual Intel CPU chip. Um, I mean, you can certainly see there's a bunch of different sectors. So there's going to be a cache on here, and, and some of the cores. I mean, if there even is cores with an S, this might just be a single core. I'm using a bag to push it around instead of my fingers just because I don't want to scratch it up even though it is kind of dirty and this is, this is the larger chip this is not the one with the dot on it but man this one is pretty scratched up Okay, so we'll move to the other one now. And I'll zoom out the microscope just so we can see these chips larger. Not larger, but you know what I mean. You can see more of the chip. There's the dot. I don't I can't tell why it's broken. zoom out. And I'll put the diffuser on too. Hopefully this will help a bit. Okay. So 
this is still the dot chip, you can still see it. On there. Let's see. I wish I had a better microscope. This one is really is not designed for this type of microscopic macroscopic work. But that's the whole chip underneath there. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it just gets more complex the more you zoom in. So now we'll look at the, the bigger chip. Here. So this is probably from a processor. Um, and I'll look at the corners. There is a chip on this one, which is probably why that they originally rejected. I I can see the chip, but it's down here in this corner. Yeah, right there. You can see the chip. Let's see the corners here. It's like a K in that corner or an H. It might not even be a letter, probably isn't, to be honest. Um, but all these dots on the side of the chip are most likely where they would go and connect the wires. Those Squares so to connect the wires to actual pins on the on the CPU. So each one of those would most likely correspond to one of the pins. In fact, I bet you that's the lettering right there. Uh, we'll see if we can zoom in some more. Oh, look at that! That's amazing. That says Pentium processor. Let's see if I can move it over just a bit more. I can't really make out the letters. Uh, I don't know if that's because there's not enough light on them. I probably just don't have the resolution. So hard to move this thing. See, I'll take the diffuser off and we will see if we can get any closer. But I'm gonna guess we're at the limits. Which does kind of suck, but you know, whatever. There we go. So I am free holding it. There we go. That's perfect. Let's see, Pentium processor 1992. So this is an even older model than one that ship was from. Okay, I got it locked on. Let's see over here. Pentium processor. I think that says. Intel, but it, it's weird. It looks like an M, MC, and maybe then the Intel logo. I'm not sure. But it's for 1992, and then there's some numbers over here which are even smaller, it looks like. Let's see. I'm probably not going to be able to read those. Let's look, go back to the other chip and see. Maybe this one has some markings on it too, but it is smaller, so I would doubt this. This is a Pentium processor. Oh, actually, so this this is interesting too. You can see on those square pads that there is little dots. And I would guess that those are where it went and tested the chip. So they put these into a machine that would test them. And it goes down onto those contact pads. It would test every single one of those. Um, and, I'm, and that's probably why they put the dot on it. 
That's pretty cool. And there's, looks like that's the text. So I'll turn it around here. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video of looking at this kit from 1998. Um, I know it's a bit long for just looking at a six inch silicon wafer that's the same pattern over and over. Let's see some more shots of it. There I am. I put those in new bags so that they weren't in the same bag, they weren't touching each other. Um, but here's a, some more looks up at the kit. Um, and I store my wafer, I don't keep it in this box like this. I put it in, in its baggie in between these two pieces of cardboard in this bag. Just so that stays really safe. I'm thinking about storing those in something. But eventually the idea with this kit is that I'm going to be putting it inside of a frame so this is going in the frame the mechanical sample of the cpu is going in the frame and these two dies are um i don't think i'm going to include any of this stuff in and i'm just going to put a little like right up of it try to get it all framed nice uh, and then it'll go on my wall so i hope you guys all like this there. thanks for watching